we have an agreement uh, among us and with the International Olympic Committee for NHL players to participate in the 2026 and 2030 Olympics. Since I joined the PA since last February, it's been clear how much our players embrace and support the opportunity to represent their countries in the Olympics. Uh, that's one of the things as we did fall tour. And prior to that, uh, players would constantly say to us, we want to play in the Olympics, we want to be in the Olympics, we want to be part of the Olympics. And today's announcement makes that a reality. We made it. And uh, that's really important. That's uh, two years work and uh, more intense the last six months, I think, if I can say. But uh, the most important thing is uh, since two years, we learned to work together. I think this news uh, will make happy the young players who will have uh, in front of them at least two Olympic games. And why not 34? Because it will be in a high hockey place. Is it possible in the geopolitic situation on a safety environment to, argue, to bring back the Russian and Belarus? That's the answer we're going to have for the year coming. After that, uh, about the Olympic game, uh, the qualification round will come closely because in August, September, Belarus is involved. And uh, by the ranking, uh, Russia is, is uh, already qualified. But can we treat both separately? That's a question uh, uh, the Council will have to, to, uh, to answer. There were a lot of things that we've worked out in previous Olympics, rules, officiating, accommodations and the like. I wasn't worried about those things. The big issues were the big ticket items, who is going to pay for the insurance, who is going to pay for the travel, and who is going to pay for the players and their families. From our standpoint, it was really when the Players Association got comfortable that the players were going to be treated appropriately, that we were going to be comfortable going once we were told that the big ticket items were going to be paid for and that the players would be insured and traveled appropriately. IOC organization committee help us on different way to uh, answer all the questions uh, sent by uh, NHLPA and IHL for this, uh, this topic. The fact of the matter is, our agreement is we're not responsible for any of the major costs, the big ticket items how the IIHF raises the funds, whether it's from the IIHF or the organizing committee or the IOC for 30, that will be their issue, not ours. Given the arena is just starting to be under construction, is there any push to make it an nhl size rink instead of the, the wider Olympic ice? Yeah, um, there is a new rule now uh, in IHF about uh, first uh, our top heaven. Uh, so we've, we will use NHL size. Next February, the NHLPA and the NHL will host the Four Nations Face-Off, featuring the top NHL players from Canada, the United States, Sweden, and Finland. Uh, this tournament will take place in two cities, one in Canada, one in the United States. We view this event as a building block to a larger World Cup. Our intention in terms of an international calendar is to go to the Olympics in 2026, two years later play a World Cup, Two years after that, go to the Olympics in 2030, and two years after that, play a World Cup. That's the cycle we want to get on. There's other countries that would want to be here, but as the commissioner just mentioned, it just we didn't have enough time to be able to put a bigger tournament on. You know, obviously, I've been vocal about this. Um, I feel like it's important for for hockey as we continue to to uh, to try to grow our game internationally and and uh, and at home. Um, you know, I think it's a great thing. Um, it's an exciting schedule. Uh, something that people can look forward to, you know, every two years, every second year. Um, it's something that I know the four of us are uh, super pumped about, and obviously the the Four Nations Cup. Um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be exciting. You know, four great teams that are uh, are going to be competing, um, and I can't wait.